Well, good morning. How are you this morning? We're all up. We're all alive. Well, I am, and I'm certainly alive, feeling fantastic to be with you. Welcome to our new time slot. We're going to give this a shot 6.30 on the first day of winter. That's pretty keen. And Emily Lambert is so keen. See, it's good to have you with you. Good to have be with you. And, and hey there, Hannah. Hey, so we're trying 6.30 out, just hoping it might be a little bit easier for uh, families and trying to get kids out to school. I'm going to get a whole bunch of kids out to school. Good morning, Jackie. It's wonderful to be with you. First day of winter is pretty mild, actually. So what's this Tasmanian winter stuff? So that's awesome. It's great to have some friends with me. I thought I might have been alone, actually. Uh, Hey, but listen, if you are listening back to this uh, either later on in the day, that's absolutely fantastic. Good morning, my beautiful bride. Hey, Karen. Uh, But we, uh, you can find this posted later on both on YouTube and into Spotify. Uh, It's important that you can still keep on commenting and refreshing that, but you can find our YouTube channel and our Spotify and Abundant Life Church Tasmania. And, uh, and if you're watching this back on Facebook Live as well, that's fantastic. So if you're listening to this on Spotify or YouTube, and the reason why I'm saying hi to friends and families is because we're originally uh, broadcasting this in Facebook Live and we get to do that with family. So it's, it's uh, 6.30. I'm going to dive on in and I hope that you're ready uh, to grow not just today, but this week. I hope you're really ready to, to hear from the Lord. I believe he's got something he wants to share with us today as we continue on. And I guess as we bring to a conclusion, uh, about a three-part series on living a life of purpose. So uh, thank you for liking us. Thank you for sharing us. It means a lot to me personally, and it means an awful lot to people who also get to lean in uh, and listen in. And I really believe uh, be able to grow and draw from uh, the truth and the light, the love that we carry. How, how good is this? So uh, I'm, I'm going to encourage you, uh, my friends online, straight off the bat, and again, if you are watching this later on, please feel free to continue to, to make these declarations. But why don't you type in this morning, I pursue life because love pursues me. How good is that thought? I can pursue life because love pursues me. And, and if you want to type that up this morning as a declaration to the obstacles that you're going to face today, the declarations to your to-do list, I'm pursuing life because love pursues me. You know what? We say this every single time we're together, that you are here for a reason. You are made on purpose for a purpose. You're not just some cosmic slug, sludge or slug having a spectacularly good day. You are made by the loving hands of a father. He's got a plan. He's got a purpose for you. And every problem that you face comes with provision and comes with promise attached. That's good news. Hey, Tim. So if you want to type up, I pursue life because love pursues me. I think that's a pretty good way of starting our morning together. I can't get the smile off my face. I'm just so happy this morning. It's great to be with you. So we we love to affirm uh, why we are here as a community of faith, a family of faith, We, again, believe you're here for a reason, and we love to be able to celebrate people and communities. These first steps and these next steps of faith, they're so important to us. And then as as we develop our belief, our behavior follows. We say this, that where the mind goes, the person follows. And so while you don't need to believe in order to belong to to this community of faith, uh, we really believe and we're really trusting that as your belief develops as you start thinking different things about maybe God, maybe different things even about your problems, different things about your purpose, that as that belief develops, so too does our behavior. And that's kind of cool, huh? So we love to honor, we love to celebrate, celebrating babies and birthdays and, and starts of winter. We live the winter, we thrive in the winter, but we also love to honor the unique gifts and skills which are on your life, your stories, your experiences and and everything and anything that we can do as a church to actually be able to help draw that out and release that out into a world which so desperately needs truth and light and love and grace. We want to honor that gift in you. Part of this celebrating, part of this honoring is actually fulfilling our mission as a church, which is in one word to connect. We love connecting with with our Father, with our best friend Jesus. And as we connect with him, Life takes on a whole new meaning, a whole new level. Even our, even the giants that we face 
uh, take on a, a symbol of actually blessing us because there's something they're supposed to give us and in him we get to take him down. That's good news, right? But we connect with Jesus and then through that we connect with each other. We take this living and vibrant faith, we take it out into our world and then we take it out into the four corners of this globe. And I want to also thank you so much for the last three weeks as we pushed in as a church uh, with our missions. I, if you cut me, I bleed missions. We, we so exist to get outside of the four walls of a, of, a, of a building or of a property and be able to take this goodness and this hope that we have into the world. And I want to thank you for joining us. Thank you for developing the belief that we have. Thank you so much for everyone who started participating in our faith pledge yesterday. If you didn't get a chance to watch that or partake in that again, you can find yesterday's message on YouTube and there's ways in in which you can be really proactively engaged in changing literally thousands of lives here locally, regionally and globally. And so thank you so much for that. Good morning, Laura. How are you this morning? I wonder, is Otis watching with us this morning? Uh, I really hope so. Give him a bit of a kiss from me. He's one of my absolute faves. So, so we talk about connecting. We talk about values. We talk about our purpose. And I guess the whole concept is that we don't judge, but we adjust. Jesus loves us exactly as we are. We find acceptance and value and belonging in him. Uh, his, his thoughts towards us, his movements towards us were there even while we were still so lost in our rebellion and in our rejection of him. And yet he loves us too much to leave us here. So he's not judging, he's adjusting. The last couple of weeks we've been drilling into Matthew 4 and it's the temptations of Jesus in the desert and how he overcame these temptations. And in doing so, he established something for us that in him we are actually overcomers. In him who has overcome the world, we can actually know purpose that is not prevented or tripped up or perverted through a whole bunch of temptation. And I really believe that it's possible for us to live a life free from temptation and and moving from goodness to goodness, victory to victory. And that's what a life of purpose is actually all about. We've been saying for the last couple of weeks that that be mine, says the Lord, not theirs. Not don't belong to the problems. Don't belong to the don't belong to the to the issues of the world. Belong to Jesus. And that what we set our sights upon, we become. What are we hungry for? And so today I'd like to establish this statement for us. And thank you so much for putting up that. I pursue life because love pursues me. And I'm going to challenge you again. Why don't you type this in? Because of who you are, I am, I can. This is talking to Jesus. Because of who you are, I am and I can. We know we have something worth living for. We have something worth giving for. We have something worth dying for, and it's found in Jesus. We can find it in the world, and so much of the world tries to, tries to echo or mirror, but it comes up short, doesn't it? I know I've chased those things myself, but when we actually find uh, love in its purest form, when we find acceptance in its, in its ultimate um, value and, and expression, in Jesus, life actually takes on this opportunity for us to, to pursue that. And because of who he is, I can know who I am and I know what I can do. So we've been looking at the temptations of, of Jesus in the desert. And, and then there was three temptations. Good morning, trousers. We're looking forward to celebrating your birthday this week, buddy. Happy birthday for Wednesday. It's preemptive, but I won't be online. But hey, listen, we, we know that Jesus was tempted in the physical in the spiritual and in the vocational, in his sense of purpose. It was the flesh, it was the ego, and it was materialism. We can find it in this way. It was an identity or calling or even his authority. And so the first temptation was, why don't you turn these stones to bread? Man, you must be hungry. And, and trying to get Jesus stepping into a physical state with which he would, he would walk out his ministry, walk out his purpose relying purely on his own strength and he said no i don't i don't exist on what i can get i exist on what i've been given and that is by the very word of the lord and so this morning i'd like to drill into this next couple of thoughts and how do we overcome this temptation how do we live this life of purpose moving from victory to victory i believe It doesn't need to be hypothetical. It doesn't need to be theoretical. It even needs to to transcend almost a theology and move into practical 
application and it's possible for us to live a life of purpose overcoming temptation. The first thing we need to know is that Jesus is so for us. Isn't that fantastic? He's so for us. In, uh, Romans tells us that in Jesus there's no condemnation. We love John 3.16. For God so loved the world. For God so loved you. For the God so loved me that he sent Jesus. That whoever would believe in him, there's that belief in him. Not whoever would behave and do the right thing, but whoever would believe in him would not perish but have eternal life. But it's so important to read John 3.17 as well because he says, this is how I'm going to do this with you. This is how we are going to do this together. So God so loved us that he gave Jesus but he says in John 3, 6, 3, 17, God did not send this person, Jesus, into the world to judge and condemn us, but to be our saviour and to rescue us. Isn't that phenomenal? God didn't. He says, I love you. I've given you this gift. This gift is not here to condemn you or judge you. Jesus himself said later on, he said, I didn't come to judge you. I came to bring you truth. I came to bring you freedom. I came to bring you the full expression of my love. That's good, right, Teresa? So I love that this is, this is actually a rendering from the Greek. But if Jesus had said this in the Aramaic, the, the language that Jesus said, it would have said it like this. God did not send his son into the world to judge and condemn the world, but so that we would live by his hand. Isn't that wonderful? That we would live by his hand. So that when Jesus said... No, I don't live by bread alone. I live by the word that comes from the God, word of God's mouth. He says, I don't live by what I have to get. I live by what I have been given. Because of who you are, Jesus, I am and I can. So Jesus was tempted in three times. He was tempted in hunger. He was tempted to test God's love. Hey, throw yourself down off this mountain or off this temple you know, and check out if God really is there for you, if he really is watching and then, and then who are you going to worship? Worship me. And we all have to decide who we're going to worship. I know that times I've worshipped uh, you know, material things. I've worshipped uh, issues of my heart and soul. I've, wish, oh, I've worshipped my problems. I've given all my focus and attention to my problems. But Jesus overcame these temptations to be drawn aside, to be enticed, so that in him we would be free from temptation. In him we would have victory in him, we could live this life of purpose, this life of power over sin, this life of power over temptation, this life of power over depression and anxiety and worry. That's great, Jamie. It's great to see you with us today, mate. You are going to have a fantastic day. So it's not about the hungering of the flesh. But what I'd like to drill in today is, is just wrapping this up, is saying, so how do we overcome this temptation how do we live a life of purpose first of all it's actually saying why would i remain in him and then how do i remain in him so this the sense of we find victory by remaining in him john 15 says that if you remain in me you abide in me you take your life sustenance from me i remain in you i abide in you you i, I give you my life sustenance and you'll bear fruit you will you will be powerful you will be victorious he is very clear he says apart from me you can't do these things he says apart from me you are going to be led into temptation and temptation when it gives full birth leads to sin james tells us this it says when desire has conceived it gives birth to sin and when sin is full grown it gives birth to death romans 6 23 tells us that the wages of sin is death now, I want to let you know that, first of all, temptation is not sin. And second of all, temptation does not come from God. James 1, 13 tells us that. Don't say God is tempting me. God doesn't tempt us. He will test us in order that we may, and we may move forward in certain things. We can go to new levels in him, but he doesn't tempt us. And so when he's, when he's saying to us, I have overcome these temptations, we know that we have victory in him. But if we are apart from him, temptation comes. When temptation comes, it entices us and leads us astray. But temptation itself is not sin. When we give in to temptation, it becomes sin and it becomes death. How do we avoid that? We remain in him. We spend time in him. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about how we remain in him 
in just a minute. But avoiding sin, the good news is that we actually have someone who A, has overcome the world, did it in the desert and did it again in the garden. But in 1 John 2, it says this. It says, you are my dear children and I write these things to you so that you won't sin. It's not a matter of, oh, I'm going to sin. But it's saying, no, you don't have to sin. This is not part of the equation. So that you won't sin. The good news is, again, speaking about not condemning and not judging us. He says, but if anyone does sin, we continually have a forgiving redeemer who is face to face with the Father. That means he's our Father, even if we do sin. Even if we do sin. Jesus Christ, the righteous one, he is our atoning sacrifice for sin. Not just for our sins, but the sins of the whole world. Wow. This is just amazing. So how do we avoid this? We remain in him. And how do we remain in him? But can I continue just building on this thought of why remain in him? Why do we remain in him? Because he has overcome the temptations of lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. These are very typical human attributes. God knew this, what we think, what we wish, and what we feel. We have complete victory in him. 1 Corinthians 10 tells us, no temptation has overtaken us except that which is common to mankind. He knew it and therefore he overcame it. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will provide a way out so that you can endure it. Amen. John 16.33 says this, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. We can remain in him. Why? Because in him is victory. And finally, 1 Corinthians 15.57 says, Give thanks to God. He gives us victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. We have victory over lust of the eyes, the body, and the pride of life. And we continue building on this because God knows who we actually are. These are the, the essential properties of being a human being. They call them the transcendentals. The transcendentals means that we search for truth, we search for beauty, and we search for goodness. It's the essential property and nature of a human being. Truth, beauty, goodness. We can see it in science. We can see it in the arts. We can see it in religion. And you know what? Jesus commanded us to love the Lord your God with all of our might, all of our mind, soul, and body with all of our strength he commanded us to do this and he actually says i have done this i have completed the great commandment of loving the lord your god with all your mind soul and strength isn't this fantastic i have brought you truth i have brought you beauty and i have revealed to you goodness what's attacked in these temptations why do we remain in him What is attacked in these temptations? Does the Lord really love me? Can I really trust him? Is there a truth that there is a creator of all life and that I find life, I find purpose, I find victory in him? Or do I have to go and get what my stomach needs, what I think my head needs, what the world tells me I need? No, he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. I did that because I won it in the, in the desert for you. What is attacked here? The Lord's love. What is attacked here is the beauty of the place that we actually have in him and the permanency of it. That's why we remain in him, because the devil wants to attack the way that you are crafted and created for beauty and for purpose and for permanency. And what is attacked here? Your sense of purpose, who you worship, why you worship, how you worship, it led and enticed away and led and enticed away that you may sin and that you may receive the wages of death when we remain in him, that that does not need to be the reality. This is good news, right? That he has overcome that. So how do we remain in him? Well, first of all, we've been typing up because of who you are, I am and I can. If you haven't yet typed that in, why don't you type that in? Because of who you are, I am and I can. How do we remain in him? We have a knowledge 
of who he is. We know that he is the king of kings and we spend time with him reflecting on this, declaring that truth that you are eternal and you are good. Your love is always towards me. You will never leave me nor forsake me. You accept me just as I am, but you don't leave me there. Your grace is sufficient for every thorn in my flesh and for every temptation that the devil wants to throw at me. You are, you are you are, and the more that we can spend time declaring who He is, the better and the greater the chance that we have of knowing who we are and what we can do from that place in Jesus. Because of who you are, knowing Him. God so desperately wants us to know Him, for God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever would believe in Him, how can we believe in Him if we don't? know him and so that's part of our mission's heart is that we would be able to tell the whole world about God's goodness tell the whole world about his love tell the whole world about the victory and the way that he has overcome and that we, when we are in him we can overcome because of who you are that's the very first key of remaining in him if we think that he is if we think he is flaky if we think he's inconsistent if we think he's going to judge us and smack us on the smallest um um, infraction that's a very very hard God to approach if we think he's going to judge us and, and reject us and, and criticize us that's a very hard father to approach with a problem or with a need because of who you are beloved I just want to encourage you this week if you're listening to this later on Spotify watching this later on YouTube uh, talking about this with a friend maybe even doing it as a watch party with some other friends let's start talking about who he is his goodness and his kindness, and his mercy, and his presence, and his gifts towards us, that we find that even though there is darkness in the world, he has overcome that. How do we abide in him? We abide in him by first of all knowing who he is. So let's build on this. Because of who you are, I am. Because of who you are, I am. And I take from him my identity. I take from him my identity and, I, and first of all, we give thanks in that. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you call me your son and your daughter. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you call me more than a conqueror. Thank you that you call me a child of light. Thank you that you call me your expression of love into the world. Thank you that you call me by name. Thank you that you provide for me and you sing songs over me. Thank you that you anoint my head with oil. Thank you that you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thank you that you are my good shepherd leading me and giving me peace. Thank you that love and mercy and goodness are following me all the days of my life. How do we remain in him? By remaining in him, how do we be free from temptation? Being free from temptation, we're set free from sin and its wages. We remain in him. We remain in him by knowing him. We know him all the more by fanning a beautiful sense of thanksgiving. This is so good. So because of who you are, I am. And I thank you, Jesus. I thank you for your truth about me. I thank you that you knew I was so far away from you, lost and dead in sin. You still came for me and you held out your nail-scarred hands to a sinner just like me. Because of who you are, I am. Because of who you are, I can. And we take up our purpose in him. You know what? I, I love the, the four attributes of, that I find in myself that we find in believers. And that is we are warriors and we are poets. We are wise people and we are kings and queens. I am a I am a warrior poet. I want you maybe you want to even write that I'm a warrior poet. I don't need to use swords, but I use words to craft my words and my worlds and, and open up possibility and potential over people. I'm a son of spirit, not of a spear, not of my own strength. And so therefore all things are possible the words that come forth from my mouth shape a world the words that come forth from my mouth break chains in over my thinking and over the thinking of other people the words that come forth from my mouth just like him usher forth peace because of who he is i am and i can 
You know, we are, we are wise people like the, like the Magi who, who came to Jesus. We no longer just see a star over a stable. We have seen the fullness, the full light of God revealed in his son Jesus. The full expression of his love for us, his desire to have relationship with us. We know that wisdom and like the wise men, we are still pursuing the person of Christ. This is who we are. I can pursue him. I can bring him my gifts. Maybe you don't know what your gold, your frankincense and your myrrh is, but maybe it's a gift of hospitality. Maybe it's a gift of joy. Maybe it's a gift of, of invitation. Maybe you're a leader, a teacher. Maybe you understand the, some of the mysteries of heaven. Maybe you just want to declare the, the, the plans and the purposes of God in a prophetic sense, speaking out heaven to earth. You know, we know that his goal isn't to just get us into heaven. If our goal was just to get us into heaven, we'd be there right now. But his goal is to get heaven into us and take it out into the world. And in all of its goodness, its joy, its laughter, its hope, because of who you are, I can. And finally, if we want to live a life of purpose, of victory, overcoming temptation, because of who you are, I will. And we live a life of action. We say where our mind goes, the person follows. That as we develop our belief, our behaviors follow in after that. Sadly, so often in my life and in the life of religion, we've gone behavior, behavior, behavior. And then we never deal with the belief system. But when I know who he is, when I know who I am, when I know what I can do, then I set about doing it. I live a life of obedience. I live a life surrendered. I give those gifts to him and I say, use it however you want. And I do invite people to, to maybe watch this or join us for tomorrow night, living what I've learned. We've got a I got the wonderful Johanna joining us tomorrow night, speaking from compassion and speaking about our missions. I can give and I can share and I can release and I can believe and I can pray for a workmate. It doesn't have to be super spiritual and, and, and make you look like a God bother if you're carrying his presence and his purpose. They will be so open to that. Hey, listen, my time is, is done. I want to take a minute to pray for you. But you know, we all were once dry bones but he speaks a word over us. You are sons and you are daughters. Live. I pursue life because love pursues me. I am the Lord's and the Lord is mine. I abide in him. I remain in him. And by doing that, the conqueror, the overcomer, who has dealt with all temptation of mind, of body, of soul, who when he said to us, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul and strength, he's done it and in him we too can keep doing it. The foundation of our life, the fabric of our life, the future and even found in today is found in the very word of God today. If you haven't had a chance, why don't you just write up the beautiful Jess because of who you are, I am and I can. Thank you for sharing this. Thank you for liking and subscribing. So many other people need to hear this and the way you engage, the way you, you uh, uh, invite other people into these spaces, they get a chance. Be brave, be bold, be courageous. Trust that the Lord wants to speak to you and he wants to speak through you. He has a plan and he has a purpose for your life. You are here for a reason. Let me pray for you. Father God, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for your word over our life. I thank you that you have overcome the world. And that in you, we too can overcome. That in that overcoming, we have victory. From that victory, our purpose is released with a whole new, renewed sense of power. Father, I thank you for people of dignity and courage of nobility and authority. I thank you for warrior poets and wise kings and queens. I thank you that you've put power in our mouth and that as our belief in you continues to develop, so too will our behaviors of sharing your love, your life, your grace and your story will set other captives free. You sent an army after us. You sent the captain of the angel armies, Jesus to rescue us from the snare which I'd created by my own hands 
and my own rebellion and you set us free. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hey, beloved, we are here for you. You can find, send us a message at helloabundant.org.au. You can continue to find us on Facebook or send us messages in any other way. We want to take the next step with you. You don't have to do this alone. We are better together. So God bless you as you go and love somebody today. Have a fantastic day.